one single new underwater cable Pick it up, slack. is making a splash in marine mammal research. This two kilometer long fiber optic cable funded by Allen Family Philanthropies is now sitting on the seafloor just off the San Juan Islands, one that's similar to others already around the sound. There are fiber optic cable cables everywhere. That's why we get internet. Uh, but we can use the same fiber for uh, monitoring marine mammals. But Dr. Shima Abadi with the University of Washington Bothell's School of Oceanography says this one is a first of its kind because of its intended use. Cables like this have already been used to measure low frequency signals like earthquakes and tsunamis. But scientists want to know if it can measure the high frequency sounds orcas make and if they can tap into the network of fiber optic cables already in place. We can basically use all the fiber optic cables that are in either Puget Sound or some other locations uh, and use them as a new platform for passive acoustics monitoring of uh, marine mammals. Here's how it works. Laser pulses throughout the cable will measure if there's any strain along the cable, which could be caused by acoustic sounds like vessels or marine animals. We are using light to listen to their sound. President of Beam Research Dr. Scott Beers says this gives much better insight to orca movements compared to the hydrophones used now. The goal of this project is not just to determine if the fiber optic gable can hear killer whale calls, but we want to see if we can then locate, locate or localize where the call came from. So that's something you can't do with just one hydrophone in the water. But the DAS cable we just deployed here is two kilometers long, and we can break that up into virtual hydrophones, hundreds, even thousands of them. So it's like having thousands of ears in the water all at once, being able to say, oh, not only do I hear a killer whale, but it's up there at that latitude and longitude and that depth. Oh, and then it called again. Now it's a little deeper. Location knowledge that will help people steer clear of orcas wherever they should go. And that could help with understanding like long-term policies, like, oh, they're always foraging here. Well, maybe we should make a preserve in this area. Or they're heading north. Well, that means it's okay to do some pile driving to the south. For Environment Northwest, I'm meteorologist Leah Pizzetti.